predictions for the upcoming NFL season. Starting off with the AFC, let's take a look at the AFC North. This is my personal ranking of how I think that the AFC North shakes out. In fourth place, we've got the Cleveland Browns. In third place, we've got the Pittsburgh Steelers. In second place, we've got the Baltimore Ravens. And in first place, we've got the Cincinnati Bengals. Fourth place for the Browns. I don't think anything that they did last year is reproducible into this year. I think that they had a very nice underdog type story where they battled through the injuries, they managed to overcome them, and somehow get one of the very high playoff seeds in this wild card setting. But what you did last year, you absolutely cannot do this year. You're going to see, hopefully, Deshaun Watson for a whole year. But realistically speaking, we haven't seen Deshaun Watson play a full season of football in like four years. So if he somehow manages to do that, I don't even know what it looks like, really. We can try and base it off the five games last year, but I don't know if that was really sustainable. What's that pace going to be like they were going to finish with 13 wins? Be even better than what they were? We can say yes, but we can also just take their season for what it was. It was an anomaly. They are not a playoff team, really. They are cursed. They're a bit cursed. Every year, year in and year out. The Browns are very familiar and acquainted with being in last place in the, the division. Even when they had that really good year with Baker, everyone had high expectations. They came around and they flopped the next year. So, I think that they regress a bit. I think that there are already injuries to deal with. Deshaun Watson is not going to be fully healthy. Nick Chubb has a health injury history with his knees. He's going to miss the first four weeks of the season already. I don't think that he's going to be all that great when he comes back. Other than that, uh, you know, Denzel Ward just uh, suffered his fifth concussion of his career. You've got a lot of the, like, big name, big paycheck guys on this team suffering in the injury department. And I just don't think that if he goes down, there's no Joe Flacco on the quarterback roster this year. I think that the Browns sink to fourth. And then third place, Steelers. Really speaking, it's Arthur Smith. You got rid of Matt Canada, and I think that was a fantastic move. But I don't like the Arthur Smith offense. I don't like what he did in uh, Atlanta. And I think that this quarterback competition, while it is an improvement of last year's quarterback play, I think that the division getting harder. And just everyone being new to the system is going to lead to dysfunction. And what we saw out of this quarterbacks in the preseason was not good. I think that the Giants all around had the worst quarterback play in the preseason, but not too far behind them was the Pittsburgh Steelers starters. And so, whether they go Justin Fields or Russell Wilson, I think that they'll somehow manage to get to like a 9-8 and eight record, and they'll keep it. Maybe they'll even go 8-8-1, eight, eight and because I don't see them winning much more than that. They'll somehow keep Mike Tomlin's streak alive. But, you know, I, I just think that the division gets harder. They're not going to be able to keep up with these other two top teams. And I don't trust their offense as much. Um, yeah, when DJ Watt is playing, they're pretty good. But well, I, I think that they managed to escape last place. I think that uh, ordinarily I would say that this is going to be a last place team. But... Steelers haven't won last place in the fourth, uh, they haven't gotten the fourth place in the NFC North in like 30 years, something crazy like that, whereas the Browns have not won the division in a long time, so the Steelers are allergic to the bottom and the Browns are attracted to the bottom, <laughs> I think that it's just going to pan out this way where the, the Steelers finish ahead of the Browns, even though both teams were playoff teams last year, I don't think either of them are going back this year. In second place, I've got the Baltimore Ravens, and the reason for them dropping from first to second uh, is mostly because they're offseason. Offseason, they lost a bunch of starters. Um, on In total, they lost like 15 pieces. You've got guys on the whole line. You've got guys in the defense like Geno Smith, um, not Geno Smith, Geno Stone, Patrick Queen. Um, yes, you added Derrick Henry, but in total, what they added on offense versus what they lost, there's a huge gap between it. So I think defensively, they won't be as dominant as they were last year. Offensively, they'll probably be somewhat similar. You lose your running backs, but you gain a really good running back. Uh, it is a new offensive 
system and I think that can take time as well uh, you don't have Greg Roman anymore uh, inevitably they'll probably be like the top rushing offense in the entire NFL they'll still be really good as long as Lamar Jackson is around if Lamar is playing quarterback for the Ravens their playoff team there's no doubt about it but I think that they sink to the number two spot and number one is going to the Bengals just because I think off season wise they did a little bit better than the Ravens um, they lost some people, but they, I would say that they gained more people in the offseason than they lost, um, just as far as, like, contributors. They're making a more concerted effort to keep Joe Burrow up, um, both between the draft and the offseason, and I think that Joe Burrow, injury-wise, well, yes, it is something that we have to pay attention to, is very talented. Bengals are always at the top of the AFC when he's playing, but as soon as he's gone, it's very tough sledding for them. Um, last season, honestly, they did fine without him, but you know how much better they would have been if he was there. Uh, and that's something that I can say about the Bengals, and I can't say that about the Browns, because the Bengals have actually shown us that they can win. They have won multiple seasons with, like, deeper playoff runs, and they even made it to a Super Bowl. So I am fully okay with saying that when the Bengals are healthy with Joe Burrow, they are a top AFC team, and I think that's going to be the case this year because Joe Burrow did not miss a day of practice in the preseason for the first time in his career, and I think that that is a very healthy sign. So, that's my AFC North predictions. Moving into the AFC East, fourth place, New England Patriots, third place, Buffalo Bills, second place, Miami Dolphins, first place, New York Jets, fourth place, Patriots, there's nothing to really question about it. We're in a rebuild year. We have a new offensive coordinator. Sorry. We have a new head coach in Gerard Mayo. Uh, I think we also do have a new offensive coordinator. Uh, new quarterback. There's there's so much that's new about this team. It's a complete rebuild year. No one is expecting anything. Just go out there. Give, give Drake May a chance to take over probably like three or four weeks in and then build this confidence. We're not going to accomplish anything. This was one of the worst rosters in football last year, and we didn't make any big name acquisitions. We're not going to be able to beat out any of these other teams. They have better quarterback play. They have more established coaching. They're just in a better place than we are. I think that we're setting ourselves up for the future. We had our time at the top. It is not our time anymore. We're, we're okay. We're okay to be in fourth place. That is, we just need to grow. <laughs> Third place, Buffalo Bills. This is because they have gotten way worse in this offseason. You think about how many defensive starters that they lost. It is an unbelievable amount. And then on offense, their top two pass catchers are gone. So Josh Allen has less help on the offensive side of the ball and on the defensive side of the ball. And there's only so much that he can do. Like... I think that he is a phenomenal athlete. I think that he is great, and he, they, the Bills have dominated this division ever since the Patriots lost Tom Brady. But I think this year they have definitely taken a step back. They barely made it last year. Let's not pretend like they were a super dominant team all throughout the year. They were pretty bad, like, compared to their other seasons. They were in bad shape halfway through the year. They climbed and crawled their way back into first place just barely stealing it back from the Dolphins at the very end, and so I think we allowed ourselves to forget about it, but this Bills team was already struggling majorly last year, and they got way worse, so I don't think that they have enough to make that same playoff push. I think that they fall out of the playoffs. Number two, the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins also have had a decent amount of roster turnaround. They lost a decent number of players, but I think that they did a much better job of replacing them with equal level of talent. Unlike the Bills, the Bills lost a bunch of guys, and then they brought in worse people. Like, they are, their roster has truly really downgraded on both sides. Whereas the Dolphins, I think that they're going to be able to maintain their regular level of play from last year into this year, because they haven't made major improvements, but they haven't gotten that much worse. And I think with McDaniel, Mike McDaniel, you're going to have a top offense in the league, so expecting top five offense, them being explosive, probably getting off to a hot start, and then getting figured out and just getting a wild 
card spot once again, so I do have the Miami Dolphins making the playoffs once again, uh, but I don't think that they're going to be the top team in the AFC East. I think that spot will actually go to the New York Jets, and the Jets, once again, they, you know, they signed Aaron Rodgers to that two-year deal, and they missed out on year one, so they have, right now, they have no other chance to go do anything if they ever want to play winning football, it is now. And I think that they understand that pressure and they are fully gearing up for, to have the best possible year that they can. This defense was already elite. It was the best in the league. If you go from Zach Wilson to Aaron Rodgers, even if Aaron Rodgers is a shell of his previous self, you're jumping 50% of the league. You're going from a bottom three offense in the league to a mid, even if it's like 17, 16, 15 range, you have improved so much on one side of the ball, you're you're gonna make the playoffs off of that alone. Look at what the Browns did last year. You can't tell me that if the Browns could make the playoffs last year, the Jets can't make the playoffs this year with that level of offense. Outside of that, I think that their offseason moves are indicative of them knowing that their time is very limited. Going out and getting Morgan Moses, signing Tyron Smith, getting Mike Williams, they're making moves to try and make this offense as protective and easy for Aaron Rodgers to navigate as possible. Uh, drafting Milwaukee Corley, things like that. They're adding key pieces to the offense, to the offense on the defensive side of the ball. They already were really good. You do lose some guys. And then you try and bring in Hassan Reddick, which I think was a good move. His holdout is crazy, but you're trying. You have your mind in the right place. They're fully in a win-down situation. I think that they're going to live up to the hype this year. I think that they're going to deliver on what they missed out on last year. And I think it's going to be a Matthew Stafford to the Rams, Tom Brady to the Buccaneers type season in year two. So far, it's been more like Russell Wilson to the Broncos, except it's not bad play. It was just a disappointing year. Uh, and Aaron Rodgers, healthy, hopefully is healthy. I think that he can take them to the playoffs at the top of this division. Then, let's move into the next division, which will be the AFC West. Fourth place, Las Vegas Raiders. Third place, Denver Broncos. Second place, LA Chargers. First place, Kansas City Chiefs. The Raiders, I think that they end up tanking this year. They do not have the quarterback of the future that they need. Antonio Pierce getting the head coaching position was the right move. I think that is good on them. They, they made the right decision this time. He is a player's coach. The team will rally behind him. Aiden O'Connell and Gardner Minshew is not solving any of your problems long term. Gardner Minshew getting the start for this season, I approve of because I think he is the better quarterback and I think that it's the right decision for right now. But Realistically speaking, if they want to do anything in this AFC, they're going to have to go and get a real quarterback, whether that's in the draft or whether that's in free agency. And they're going to realize that because Gardner Minshew, maybe they give him a shorter leash, maybe he throws one too many hospital balls, and they put in Aiden O'Connell. But Aiden O'Connell is not that guy. He is not going to be your franchise QB. If he was, I think we would have seen it last year. And he wouldn't be losing out week one to Gardner Minshew. It's not about giving him a chance. It's about there's nothing there. That is my personal opinion on it. Um, and so whether you tank and you try and get a premier draft pick or you just end up having quarterback struggles and not being able to win enough games, I think they inevitably end up at the bottom of this pool. Next up, we've got... The Denver Broncos. The Broncos, I think, are one year ahead of where the Raiders are. They got their quarterback. They're gonna they're trying out who they believe should be their quarterback of the future. Sean Payton said that he was amazed by his accuracy. We'll see what Bonix can do. But fact of the matter is, if they couldn't make the playoffs last year under Russell Wilson, who was playing pretty good football, there's absolutely no way that they're gonna do it this year. I don't think that they've gotten better in this offseason. I think that they're going into a rebuild, and that is completely fine. That is good for them. It's the right decision. There's no reason.
reason to think that they can make the playoffs this year. I don't think anyone has those expectations or those hopes, and I think that would be correct to not have those. Um, but Bo Nix, him being the starter week one, I think is great. Good decision on their part. Go out there, get all of his first year jitters out of the way, see what you have, and try and compete with him next year. This year is just a developmental year and a rebuild, and if you end up being below the Raiders, yeah, I could see that as well. I think that they'll both be pretty bad. Um, like, 5-1 territory. That's what I'm expecting. Anyway, after that, second place, LA Chargers. I think you've made the right decisions. You have definitely gone out. Getting rid of Brandon Staley was good. Going out and getting new offensive coordinator in Greg Roman to pair with uh, Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, uh, those are winning decisions. You know, Jim Harbaugh has had a lot of success in the NFL and in college. Uh, they're going to move into a more running philosophy to ease the, the burden on Justin Herbert, maybe extend how long his career can be out of as a result of this. I think these are all good decisions. But the Chargers have been very disappointing year in and year out. They've always had the talent to compete, and they just haven't. And now they don't have that talent. You lost Keenan Allen on offense. You didn't replace him with anyone defensively. You really weren't all that great last year. Um, and so, personally, I think that they finished in kind of a poor spot, and they don't do... I, I think they'll, like, improve marginally. They'll, they'll be mid, but they're not making the playoffs. It's the first year to a multi-year transition. They're going to have to just figure things out this year. Then they can recruit more talent, and then they can actually compete. They have the quarterback to do it. They have the coaching staff to do it. But the offense is abysmal. I don't know if the, the scraps of the Ravens in the backfield plus this wide receiver core is really going to be able to be saved by Justin Herbert, like, it's it's like Josh Allen, you have an extremely talented quarterback, but this is just not going to cut it, and so I think that the Chargers, they need more time. Finally, the Chiefs, the Chiefs won the Super Bowl, they added offensive pieces, they lost Legeria Sneed, but their better offense will make up for their better defense, they rule this division, there's nothing to, to even talk about, the Chiefs are winning the AFC West. Finally, let's get into the AFC South. Fourth place, Tennessee Titans. I think that the Titans are pretty much equivalent to the Raiders in the sense that you have a guy that is heading your team, but I don't think that he's that good. I think that the roster is constructed interestingly. Like, you made a lot of free agency moves, and some of them I kind of like. But at the end of the day, I don't like that coaching decision to move away from Mike Vrabel. Vrabel was taking very lack of pizzazz, untalented, conventionally untalented teams into the playoffs and kind of deep into the playoffs. He took Ryan Daniel as like a remains and managed to be good, <laughs> you know. That was a very weird era of play in the NFL and we all just were okay with it. And then Mike Rabel, you really let him go after something like that. I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that decision. I think that he is a good coach, and I think the combination of a good coach, uh, of a new head coach, plus Will Levis as your quarterback, you're going to end up taking as well. Will Levis is just Sam Howell. He is just going to be a gunslinger, throwing the ball deep. He's going to throw a bunch of passes. Their wide receiver core is decent, so maybe he'll put up a lot of yards, but he's inaccurate. He is not the guy, and I think that they will tank to go get their guy, but it's not him. That's how I feel about them. I think that they're firmly in bottom place. They have the worst quarterback situation of any of these teams. Anthony Richardson, CJ Stroud, Trevor Lawrence, they all clear well up as easily. And so, uh, if you're going to compete not only in this division, but in this conference, you need a better quarterback. And that's why I think this year is a bust for them. Uh, third place, I've got the Colts. I think that Anthony Richardson, though he looked very nice, 
guys in those first two games. He did not have time to develop. He spent most of this last year injured, so it's not like he was on the bench getting reps um, or observing. He was just getting healthy, and now he's going to step into a place where, yes, this team did almost just make the playoffs, but they were kind of operating with a guy who has been able to, like, at least figure out the NFL enough to know Gardner Minshew was playing at his floor level. We've seen what Gardner Minshew's ceiling is, and we know that as a backup, he is a capable backup. He is probably one of the best backups in the league. He's not a starter, though. Anthony Richardson. We still need to see what is there. He's still a very raw prospect. He needs to get all of his hiccups out of the way. And with him missing all of last year, we didn't get that. So I think this is just going to be a developmental year for him. I think that he's more in the category with, like, a Drake May and a Bo Nix. He's really more competing with those guys than with anyone else, because why are we going to have all these expectations for him when he is coming off of a, a big injury and he didn't get to play at all, really? He played, like, six quarters of football last year. Um, so I'm going to be treating him as if he is a rookie quarterback that needs to get all of these bumps out of the way. If he somehow comes in and starts playing amazing right off the bat, props to him. I, I wouldn't have guessed it, but yeah, I think that the Colts, they probably are slightly worse than last year. Number three, I've got the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars two years ago made the playoffs as the top team in this division, and they won a playoff game. And I think that last year, they managed to regress a bit, but they were off to a good start. Like, this was a good team through two-thirds of the season, and then they fell apart. And I guess we're going to get a lot of complaints about Trevor Lawrence and questioning of his ability, his caliber. But realistically, I think that they get back into it. They are not too far off from who they were two years ago. Honestly, last year, they weren't too, off from, too far off from the playoffs itself. They really just had a big meltdown at the end of the year, and they missed it, but I like Doug Peterson as a coach. I trust Trevor Lawrence to be better. I think that last year he regressed, but I am more in favor of this year's wide receiver core than last year. Calvin Ridley, I honestly think that he did throw them off rhythm a little bit. Uh, two years ago, they had such a weird wide receiver core, but it worked. You know, the Zay Jones, Christian Kirk, all these, like, questionable guys that that spread the wealth type of offense was very good for them and now you're getting Brian Thomas Jr. you're getting Gabe Davis it's a bunch of like I don't think other defenses know where the ball is going it could go anywhere and so with that I feel like the Jaguars will be able to correct their mistakes enough from last year to just barely crawl into the playoffs. I'm expecting them to snatch that 7th seed, that wild card spot, beating out other teams like the Chargers, the Browns, the Steelers, and the Bills. I think the Jaguars are going to be the team to do it and get back into that area where Trevor Lawrence, you know, I have faith in him. I think that he had an off year, but I think that he's going to be back this year and playing good football. I think that two years ago, after the way he played, people had him in his top tens. Now he's completely slipped out of it. I think that he is going to show us all once again why he was drafted where he was and why he's still the quarterback of the future for this team. And finally, first place in the NFC, AFC South, you've got the Houston Texans. Nothing really much to think about this. Houston Texans come out of the gates running last year. No one had any expectations for them. They go into the playoffs, they win this quarterback coach duo of CJ Stroud and D'Amico Ryan was it brought an unprecedented level of success to Texas so quickly. I, I was expecting them to be rebuilding for a bit. They're rebuilt, they're fully rebuilt, and they got better, I feel like, in the offseason. I think as some people think that the addition of Stephon Diggs is overrated, but there are other guys that they added. Joe Mixon on offense, they added a couple of defensive pieces. I think that the Texans all of a sudden are the favorite in this division, and it's for a good reason. I think that they will be a strong team in the AFC. So, with that, we conclude the AFC play playoff picture. First, er, I don't know how the standings will really fall into place, but hypothetically, let's just say 
first place, Kansas City Chiefs. Second place, Cincinnati Bengals. Third place, let's give it to the Houston Texans. Fourth place, we'll go with the New York Jets. Fifth place, I'll uh, give that to the Baltimore Ravens. Sixth place, we'll go to the Miami Dolphins. And seventh place will be the Jacksonville Jaguars. That is our playoff picture on the AFC side. Transitioning over to the NFC. I think that the NFC is a little more boring. Uh, that is my personal take on it. But we will start with the NFC North. Coming in at fourth place in the NFC North is the Minnesota Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings, I feel so bad for them. They were supposed to have like a big develop development year for J.J. McCarthy. They're supposed to be like the Patriots, pretty much, where maybe you go out and you start with Sam Darnold, but eventually you give you give J.J. McCarthy the opportunity to go see what he has and get comfortable and get out his jitters, and then you, you try and build up going forward. With him being out for the whole year, you are just passing the time. This is like this is truly sad. It is going to be rough. Now, with that, it is a question of you. Do you think that Sam Darnold can lead this offense to winning football? Because I don't. I think we've seen it on the Panthers, and I think we've seen it on the Jets. And Sam Darnold just isn't that good. So, I don't think that they're going to be good. I think that they're going to be in last place. And honestly, you already have your quarterback. You may as well lose a ton of games and get a premier draft pick if you end up with the best draft pick. You can get it all for it, maybe, from one of those quarterback needy teams, uh, kind of like the way that the Bears did, or you can get, I don't know, you would really draft with that high of a draft pick, but if you really like a prospect, you can pair that with your new quarterback of the future. So, I'm expecting the Vikings to not even try and win that many games, because I don't think it makes any sense to. Coming in at third place, this is where I've got the Chicago Bears. The Bears, I, I think moving on from Justin Fields, I would have felt okay either way. I think if they kept Justin Fields, I would have been okay with the decision. I think moving on from him, I'm also okay with it. Caleb Williams is a very talented guy. You've done a lot of things to make this offense potentially very exciting. But personally, I'm not for immediate impact rookies like we've seen so many number one overall picks do so poorly in year one that it doesn't make sense for me to say like yeah he's gonna go out there and dominate and make the blast it doesn't Trevor Lawrence was amazing in college he still had a very tough time when he first came to the NFL and Caleb Williams even though the pieces around him are very nice I think they'll still year, need a year to work it out. Like, I don't think that they'll be a bad football team, but I don't think that they'll be good enough to make the playoffs. And that's just how I feel about it. I also don't love Matt Iberflores. I think that he is still in charge there. Uh, let me just double check that. for 
yet. That's just how I feel about it. I think that they're they're in the right direction and they they can compete for that top spot. I think that they'll be right there with the Lions, but I think for now they're just gonna make the playoffs as a wild card team. And number one, we've got the Detroit Lions, and I am pretty high on them from last year. You know, for them to be so strong that they were almost a two seed, they really should have been the two seed last year. Uh, and then to go into the playoffs and make it to the NFC Championship game, and in the NFC Championship game, be this far off from winning it. He did have a pretty big meltdown, but it was against the 49ers, and the 49ers, I don't think a lot of people outside of hope, like, were expecting them to. I was hoping the Lions would win, but I was expecting the Niners to win, if you get what I mean. Um, that is just how it is. Um, but they did a lot of great things last year, and they managed to retain their offensive coach, their offensive coordinator, and I think that is huge. So, seeing as this will be as good of an offense as last year, on the defensive side, I think that they're going to do some things to try and limit the pass a little more. They were, you know, allowing anything, anything and everything in through the air game last year. If they can limit that even slightly, then that would be huge. Um, but yeah, as of right now, I think that Detroit is in control of this division. We could see, like, Jared Goff spontaneously combust, but for the most part, once he gets in rhythm, he is in rhythm for a bit. Like, I don't think that he was the reason why LA wasn't able to do anything. They still made the Super Bowl with him. And I think that he is, like, he, he is good enough that he has got his confidence. The city has embraced him. I think that this, this partnership, they've paid him. They've paid a lot of the key players on offense. They're going to be good. Next up, we've got the NFC East in fourth place. I'm changing my mind. You guys have sold me. <laughs> uh, mainly my two Washington Commanders fans. I feel like I've been sold. I think that the Giants will actually be the worst team in this division. What we saw from Daniel Jones in the preseason was horrible. What we saw from him last year was pretty horrible. And the fact is, the city is done with him. We've seen it in Hard Knocks. We've seen it with all the fans. There's no faith in Daniel Jones. And I think he is competing against more than just other quarterbacks. He is competing against everyone. Um, and the team is just worse. I, I feel like offensively, yes, you got Malik Neighbors, but... You had Saquon and you lost Saquon. That offensive line is not good at all. On the defensive side of the ball, you did get Brian Burns, but I think I was fooling myself thinking that they could recreate what they had two years ago. I think that was maybe more of a one-off year, and realistically, this is the year where it's make or break for Daniel Jones. You're either with him or you're against him, and as of right now, I'm against him. I think that he's not going to have a good year. They're going to be tired of him, and they're going to switch. They already tried. They already tried to go and draft a different guy, and it didn't work out, so they're forced to play him. I think that it crashes and burns, and they end up in last place. Third place, I think it's going to be the Washington Commanders. I've been sold on them as not being the worst in this division. Gene Daniels is very exciting to me, and I feel like there's hope. I think that when I think of the New York Giants, I think of despair, like agony. But with the Commanders, it is the start of a new beginning. I think their franchise still has a lot of issues, but as far as the roster, it brought in and a lot of guys. You have your quarterback of the future, and I honestly think that he's going to ball out. So, uh, you know, great days ahead if you are the Commanders. Nothing this year, nothing that immediate. This was still a pretty bad roster last year. And you have a lot of guys who are so used to losing that I think that you're still going to end up having to redo the culture a bit and get into the habit of winning. And I think that this is a step in the right direction, but it's not going to come all in one year. I don't think that this is a playoff team by any means. In third place, uh, in second place, 
I've got the Dallas Cowboys. I think that the Cowboys have had a rough offseason uh, because the Cowboys are like the Lakers. Everyone is expecting them to make big moves. You have so much attention on you all the time. You're one of the most publicized and talked about franchises that any move that you make is heavily scrutinized. So for your general manager in a I don't even know what you call Jerry Jones at this point. For your puppet master Jerry Jones to say we're going all in and then do nothing in the offseason and then for CD Lamb to miss all that time in practice because he was holding out and you basically just get worse in a lot of ways. Um, like in the running back position, I don't think that they got better. I think that the running back room of Rico Dowdo on a year removed of Ezekiel Elliott, whatever is left of Delvin Cook, that's not a good running back room. Uh, you lost one of your offensive linemen, and, you know, we're gonna see probably some sort of progression from last year's level of play. Deron Bland just got hurt. The Cowboys, the stakes are really high, and I think that this, this contract situation is going to cause issues. You, you paid C.D. Lamb, and yeah, he was worth that money, but how can Dak Prescott be worth that money, and Micah Parsons be worth that money, and C.D. Lamb be worth that money, and you're only going to pay one of them heading into this season? It's going to cause locker room issues, in my opinion. I think that, inevitably, this team is going to have some sort of dysfunction, because it is like, it is so much fame and publicity, you are you're signing up for a lot if you're on Dallas. Uh, and I think that it's just going to be too much pressure. I think that the, the Cowboys are going to fall. They're definitely not going to win the division. And I honestly think that they're going to struggle enough that they don't make the playoffs this year. That is my prediction. Next up, at number one, winning the NFC East, I've got the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, the Eagles, they're a well-built roster. Last year, they fell apart uh, late in the year. And it was a huge surprise, but... Two years ago, they were in the Super Bowl. Last year, they started off very strong. Howie Roseman is an excellent GM. They are fantastic at drafting. They have made some crazy moves in this offseason. Uh, getting guys like John Dotson, Saquon Barkley. Um, even on the defensive side, I think they got Bryce Huff. They're doing well for themselves. And I think the addition of Kellen Moore as offensive coordinator is going to take this offense to places we haven't seen. Like, the passing volume is going to be so crazy. They are in a good spot. And, oh, also, no Matt Patricia. No Matt Patricia. You are going to go back to being a good team. That guy sucks. That guy is so bad. Uh, Vic Fangio, say what you will about him. I think that is way better than Matt Patricia any day of the week. Uh, so, I, I don't have doubts about this team anymore. I think that they're going to win the division. They're going to be very good. Then, going into the NFC West, in fourth place, I've got the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals, they, their coaching, I think, is a lot better than what we thought it was going to be last year. People were clowning on Jonathan Gannon. He actually did a very good job uh, with what working with what he had. People they rallied under him. That team before Kyler Murray put up some good fights. They were not an easy team to beat. But the roster is kind of untalented. Kyler Murray is back, but he can only elevate the offense so much, and there's a lot of work to be done on the defensive side of the ball. This is a team that, you know, can't really stop the run, and they can't really get any pressure on the quarterback, and I don't see them making any steps to change that. So defensively is the biggest concern. I think that the offense as a whole will do a fair amount better than last year. But this is just the worst team within this division. It To me, like, even though I don't think that they're a bad team, I don't think that they're going to be, like, bottom of the NFC. I think that they're going to be, like, maximum of eight wins is what I see. Then coming in at third place in this division... This is where I think the Seattle Seahawks will be. And I think that the Seattle Seahawks will make the playoffs from this third place position. Geno Smith, two years ago, was pretty good. Like, they made the playoffs, and it was a huge shock to everyone. But they, they, were, they were a good team. And last year, yes, they
they did slip, but they still barely missed the playoffs. It was like nine and eight season for them, and they were in the running until like the last week or two. So it's not like we're working from square one, like they completely fell apart. They just minorly regressed. Now you go out and you get a new offensive coordinator who is doing wonders in Washington in Ryan Grubb. I think that he unlocks Geno once again. I think that the way that they talk about using Kane Walker is very good and promising. And defensively, there are question marks. There are definitely question marks there. But from last year to this year, I don't think it's going to be a huge amount of change in your defensive back department. I think your DPs are pretty good. It's more about the rush defense that I'm worried about. So we'll see how that holds up. But offensively, I like them better than last year. And I think that it is enough for them to crawl into that very last playoff spot. In second place in the NFC West, we've got the Los Angeles Rams. I think that the Rams, they're going to build on what they did last year. If you have Matthew Stafford out there, you're pretty much everything that they did last year. If they do that again this year, they'll be in the playoffs, right? Um, and really, I have a high amount of faith in Sean McVay more than anything. Two years ago, it was kind of a fluke season. We, we saw Matthew Stafford go down, and we saw that the Rams struggled under McVay in a way we had never seen before. But really speaking, if McVay is coaching the team, and the quarterback has been like a semi-decent quarterback, they're in the playoffs. And I don't think that it, that changes unless Matthew Stafford gets injured. I think that they will make the playoffs once again. No one was expecting it last year. They still did it somehow. Uh, obviously, you know, there's no more Aaron Donald, but they'll find ways to recover. Kobe Turner is not that bad. Um, and yeah, I I think that they will be a wild card team once again. And then at number one in this division, we've got the San Francisco 49ers. This is an all-star lineup. They they have so many Pro Bowl level players on their team. Uh, they didn't even end up losing Brandon Ayuk. They got Ayuk. They kept everyone on that offense essentially. Um, yeah, defensively they lost a couple guys, both the injury and to other teams, but. They, they're just too good. They, as long as Brock Brady stays healthy, this will be the best team in the NFC by far. Um, yeah. And then finally, we go into the NFC South. The NFC South is probably the hardest division to determine, just because everyone is bad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so in fourth place in the NFC South, I've got the Carolina Panthers. And this is not even a knock on them. I think that the Panthers are going to be a lot better than they were last year. But you have to consider what that even is. If they win five more games this year than last year, which is already a huge improvement, they're a 7-win team. And I think that 7-win team, seven wins, I guess that's competitive in this division, but realistically, I think that they finish in fourth around a 7-win team. Uh, maybe like a 6-win team. Let's, let's temper our expectations. I think that the Panthers climb to like six wins. I think that Bryce Young plays way better. I think Dave Canales does do a very good job at reviving quarterbacks with Geno Smith and Baker Mayfield. So I'm expecting a much better Carolina Panthers team. The offense, everything about it. I'm more hopeful if I'm them. Even so, they're going to fall in last place. That's, that's how I see it. They could have a crazy year and somehow take it, because this is a weird division. Everyone is extremely poor, poor playing. I could see them in last. I could also see them having a crazy year and somehow finishing in first. I wouldn't put it past any of these teams to disappoint me or exceed my expectations. I can never predict the NFC South, really. But for now, I'm going to say the Panthers come in fourth. In third place is where I'm going to put the New Orleans Saints. The Saints last year were disappointing. I, I fully was disappointed by them. I was expecting them to have a very easy year. You know, all the conditions are easy for them. Playing in a dome, they had a very easy strength of schedule. They got their quarterback in Derek Carr. And really speaking, Derek 
Edgar coming to this team and playing as bad as he was. I don't have faith in him anymore. I always thought, like, is it Derek Carr or is it the Raiders? He was always mid, like, he was always just good enough for them to not get a good draft pick, but also just bad enough for them not to make the playoffs. And that's exactly what the Saints were last year. And I'm starting to think that is just what you get out of Derek Carr. That is, that is what the expectation is for a team led by him. So, they're changing the offense. They're, they're bringing in Clint Kubiak, simplifying the offense, I believe. We can see if Derek Carr somehow does better with this. But if he doesn't, I'm, I'm really expecting like them to be very similar plays to last year. Honestly, maybe even slightly worse. I think that they finish as like 8 and 9. Yeah. Then, coming in at second place in the NFC South, I think this is where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will be. I think that the Bucks, they have shown that they know how to win in the last couple of years. When Tom Brady came in, Todd Bowles, all that new coaching staff, there's still remnants of a good winning football team, and that's how they were able to do well last year. Um, I'm not expecting them to be able to do better than last year, but I think that nine wins is realistic. I think that they can stay in that eight, nine win range and be amongst the top of the, of the NFC South, but it's still kind of questionable. Like, Baker Mayfield did well, but you lost Dave Canales, and we saw what happened when Geno Smith lost Dave Canales. So, what is going to happen? I think that they ever so slightly regress. I don't think that they win this division this year. I think that those will stay in a similar position, but I think that they will ultimately be like an 8 or 9 win team. And then finally, I don't even feel confident about this, but I have the Atlanta Falcons winning this division just because I think defensively they have the best defense in the division and offensively Kirk Cousins can bring a team to the playoffs like we saw it on the Vikings he can support very high passing volume offenses you've got a good running back in Bijan I think that your O-line has a lot of good pieces there's a lot of potential on the offense that could be unlocked under Kirk and it's just how healthy is Kirk so if Kirk is healthy and he can play the whole season I don't see why they wouldn't be able to win the division. Because I'm imagining he's a huge step up from Tyler Heineke, Desmond Ritter quarterback room. Uh, and even if Kirk isn't able to play, I think even Michael Penix Jr. is better than either of those guys. Um, so, yeah, obviously if Kirk isn't there, I'm a lot less confident because Kirk knows at least like how to win your average game. Michael Penix Jr., he has to still make that transition into the NFL. So, what we'll, we'll bump breaks on him, I don't think that, like, he would be able to do it just as easily. But if Kirk Cousins is ready to go on week one and he plays 90% of the season, I think that the Falcons can take it. I think that he is going from a place where it was always Green Bay at the top to a place where it's kind of wide open. Like, he, he's the best quarterback in this division right now, I would say. Um, we'll see if that changes after the season, but yeah, I, I say that the Falcons win. So, with that, our NFC playoff picture in first place. I'm going to put the 49ers in second place.
that's it. That is my full playoff prediction for both sides. I think on the AFC and the NFC, this is my playoff picture. I will post it up, let you see it, let you determine what you think about it. Um, once again, I think that the AFC is more competitive and it is harder to predict. The NFC is more... weird, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> because you've got the NFC South and the NFC South is just unpredictable in a different way. Um, it's, it's always like, oh, there's so many teams, I can't imagine who's not making it for the AFC and for the NFC. It's like, how do I not just pick last year's playoff winners? <laughs> uh, and so, coming up with changes, I do keep in mind that there's a heavy amount of turnover year in and year out, and that kind of explains why I'm so different from last year's playoff victory. On average, we see, like, two to three new teams in each conference make the playoffs per year. So, I have that in the AFC for sure. On the NFC side, I don't really have that. I have the Seahawks making it instead. Um, and have the Falcons making it, but I'm not taking any huge risks. I'm not saying, like, any of those big teams are going to fully fall out of the playoffs. I've really only swapped, what was it? The Packers are still in it, the Rams are still in it. I am, I'm taking the Cowboys out. I guess I'm saying that the Cowboys are going to go from second place to completely out of the playoffs, and you could say that that is crazy, but... That's just how I feel. Uh, and no hate, no hate to the Cowboys. I, I'm not even rooting on their downfall or anything. I just think that they're, they're in an extremely tough spot. And then, yeah, I have a new winner in the South. So, pretty conservative on the NFC South. Pretty wild on the AFC side for my predictions, but we'll find out. So, as always, thank you for watching. If you enjoy content like this, review to like, comment, or subscribe, and I'll be putting out more videos as the NFL start date close, grows closer uh, to us. But yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you.